This is our 25th six physics lesson. We're going to look at momentum and impulse. We're going to look at the momentum equation. We're going to look at the impulse equation. We'll solve for variables in each of those. We'll look at how increasing the time of impulse decreases the force of impulse. Um, we'll understand how impulse changes momentum and look at that equation and solve for different variables with that as well. So momentum, the symbol is P, the variable you'll see in an equation. Um, often you'll see a P that looks like that. Um, as an object's moving inertia. So we'll see that the equation mass times velocity is equal to momentum. It's moving, it's velocity, and its mass is its normal inertia. Well, this is it's going to be new, moving in inertia because it has a velocity that's making it move. So to have momentum, you ha must have mass. You must have a velocity of some sort. And the unit comes from mass kilograms and velocity meters per second. It doesn't have its own unit. So it would be kilograms times meters per second. And the variables. So I'll fill in the variables if you're following my notes. If not, um, it's good just to get these down somewhere. Momentum, these are the variables are what you find in equations. So P is for momentum. Mass is the M. Velocity is V. Impulse is J. Time is T. Where the unit abbreviation, this is what you put after the number when you're done solving for one of these. For momentum, it would be kilo, something kilograms times meters per second. For mass, it would be something kilograms. For velocity, something meters per second. For impulse, it would be something newtons per second, and for time, it would be something seconds. Momentum is directly related to mass. The larger the mass, moving at the same speed, so this goes up, that goes up. So we can see a uh, 5 kilogram car going 10 meters per second. Multiply those two together to get momentum. You get 50 kilograms times meters per second. If you have the bigger car over here, 35 kilogram car going 10 meters per second, same speed, the velocity um, the velocity is the same. The momentum changed because of the mass. So multiply 35 times 10, you get 350 kilograms times meters per second. So what happens to the momentum of the mass of a moving object is increased? It's going to increase. Once again, going with the momentum equals mass times velocity equation. If mass goes up, momentum goes up as a result. How much more momentum does a 35 kilogram object have than a 5 kilogram object? So for this, you have to set up a ratio. And I should have said that it was moving because if it's not moving, then you don't have momentum in the first place. So it won't matter. But if it was moving, um, 35 is divided by 5. 35 is 7 times. So just take the bigger number, divide by the smaller number, or take the, um, take the initial number, put that on the bottom, take the new number, put it on top, and take that and find out how many times different it is, and we get seven times different the mass. It's asking you for how much mo the momentum changes. So the equivalent of momentum is mass times velocity. So the equivalent of having P is mv. And we can just put that after over the before scenario, and we're going to do ratios. Anything that doesn't change is going to get a 1. So before, everything was 1. But the only thing that changed is that the mass was seven times the original after in the, in the what we're comparing it to. Or what we'll, we'll with our new one, where we compare it from, and so our answer is our new value. If this, if we had a 35 kilogram car instead of a 5 kilogram car, would be seven times whatever the momentum was before. I don't know what it is, but if I knew it, I would just multiply it by seven. Momentum is directly related to velocity. The larger the velocity of the same mass, car, autom or automobile, or whatever, the, the larger the momentum. First of all, you need to be moving in the first place. So this guy right here is not going to have a momentum because anything times zero, or once again, P equals MV right there, anything times zero would be zero. But as the car starts moving, so like right here, you had going 15, a 15 kilogram car going 10 meters per second is going to have a little more momentum. It's going to have 15 times 10 or 150 kilograms times meters per second of momentum. And then this one right here going 20 meters per second is going to have 20 times the 15 or 300 kilograms times meters per second. So how much momentum does a 1,575 kilogram Lamborghini Aventador? Tador have at its top speed of 97 meters per second. So let's just straight up write down the variables. It's asking you for momentum. They give you mass. They give you velocity. And you're just going to multiply those together in that equation. And you get 152,775 kilograms times meters per second. And we can put that in scientific notation as 1.5 times 10 to the fifth kilograms times meters per second. How much more momentum does an object have when its velocity is tripled? So it's asking you for momentum, and so this equation, this is the equivalent. We can put the equivalent over the equivalent, set up an after versus before scenario. Everything's the same before. Um, the mass was the same. It doesn't say anything about the mass, but the velocity is three times, so our answer is three times its original value. Change of momentum and impulse. So an object changes momentum when velocity is changed. Take a look at the ball coming in. It changed, it's changed its momentum because it's going backwards after the ball's hit. 
And the momentum equations you can use is the change in momentum equals mass times change in velocity. So before we were just saying what was the, the momentum of an object at the moment. Well now we're asked for how much is it changed versus before. So we're going to have a changing velocity going on. And depending on how the question is asked, if they say the change in velocity was 5 meters per second, well, we would use this version of it. But if they say the change in or the final velocity was the final velocity when the initial velocity was, let's say, 6 kilogram was a 15 kilogram object, its change in momentum was blah, 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 blah. Well, we would go to this equation. So the givens list is going to help you choose which equations and where to go from there. You also have to account for direction. If this is going up to the right, I always say to the right is positive and therefore to the left is negative. When you have a change in direction, you have to do that. If you don't have a change in direction, you can just say forward. But here we can definitely see a changing direction. So we would say it's initially coming in with a positive velocity, it leaves with a negative velocity, and then we would plug those numbers into the equation. So let's look closer at some of those. What's the change in momentum of a 0.145 kilogram baseball traveling at 44 meters per second forward when hit back at negative or at 60 meters per second? So back is going to make that negative. Uh, we have our variables. What's the change in momentum? So there's your change in P instead of P. It didn't, didn't say what's your momentum. It said what's your change in momentum. And so that gives me that this right here, this change in, in momentum. They give you a mass, they give you uh, initial velocity, and they give you a final velocity, once again, taking into account back or the negative, and this is the equation this would lead, lead us to. Plug in our values, so when we plug in our values, and just watch out here, this is VF, which was a negative value, minus a positive value, which makes it a minus 2, so these is going to be minus and minus, um, they're going to be pretty much added in both negative, but when you get your answer, when you Take these in the calculator and do it in your head if you're really good at this. Um, you're going to get negative 15 kilograms times meters per second as your momentum. An impulse is a force applied for time, so we're going into the next section. Uh, and it results in the change in momentum. If you apply a force, if you hit something with a force and, and it touches a baseball for a, for a fraction of a second, you're going to change the direction that that, that object's going. You're going to change its momentum. So the basic equation, there's your J for impulse. There's your variable in the equation. And that is equal to force applied over time, or times time. And so the unit is, doesn't have its own unit either. The force unit, newtons, the time unit, second. So it's newtons times second as a unit as a unit after you would type it right in a number. And so a bat would increase the impulse force for a fraction of a second, changing the, the, the velocity of the baseball. So it's going to change its momentum. Let's look at some uh, equations here. How much force is applied during a 0.3 second, 210 newton per second impulse? So how much force is applied during this time with this impulse? And so we're going to have the, the impulse equation, but we're going to have to solve for force. So we're going to have to divide out the time, and we get force is equal to impulse over time. Plug in our numbers, and we get a force of 700 newtons. How much different is the force when padding increases the time of impulse three times? So how much is the force different when padding increases the force three times? We're going to have to find the equivalent. In order to find the equivalent, we have to go ahead and rearrange this for force, and you kind of saw that initially. So rearrange this for force, you divide it by time, divide it by time. The equivalent of force is impulse over time. So we're going to put impulse over time over itself, and we're going to plug in once for everything before. And we're going to have um, the so the before is right here, the after is right here. And the only thing that's going to change now is that the 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 time of impulse increases three times. So the time, this is the only one that changes. Everything else is all the same. And we're going to get an answer of one-third times the original. So if it was 100 before, it would be 33.3333 afterwards. Um, whatever the, whatever you would know before. If you don't know it before, you're just going to, you can just give a ratio, a relative value. You don't know what it actually was. Just It's 1.3, one-third one, one times. Impulse is equal to an object change in momentum. So let's take a look. Impulse is that equation. Um, change in momentum is that way, that equation. And when we set it up so that impulse equals change in momentum, we're going to go ahead and we're going to expand that and make FT equals the mv squared. So impulse equals the change in momentum. So this is impulse not expanded. It's change in momentum expanded. Here, this is just the same version, but we're just going to go ahead and we're going to expand J into FT, which makes up J. And so we're just going to have a bunch of different versions depending on the information we're given. And if we're given final initial velocities, we're going to want to expand that out even more into final initial velocities right here. 
So how much force is required to stop a 0.145 kilogram baseball traveling at 44 meters per second and 0.2020 seconds? So the givens us is going to be very important to pick the right equation, all these equations right here. So force is what we're solving for. We're given a mass. We're given initial velocity. We are given a final velocity. So that's going to lead us, and a time. And so that's going to lead us to this equation right here. So you rearrange it, so force is equal to take all this, divide time out from both sides. When you divide time out from both sides, you get this. Then you can start plugging in values. When you plug in values, you should get an answer of negative 319 newtons or backwards 319 newtons. The unit for impulse equals the unit for change in momentum, just in case you're wondering, okay, so how are they equal, but yet they have different units? Well, this newtons per second is actually made up of kilograms times meters per second. And let's just take a look and see how that works. Um, so we have the unit for impulse, newtons um, times seconds. Well, a newton is derived from, remember, force. A uh, newton, uh, newton is force, which equals mass times acceleration. It's derived from mass, which is kilograms, acceleration, which is meters per second squared. And then we just multiply that by, so that's, that's what a newton is and multiplied by seconds that's the same thing well when we take that and we we can divide out this second and one of those seconds so we get kilograms times meters per second which is exactly what the um the unit for momentum was so it's exactly the same thing and the common the common thing is to do is if you're solving for momentum you're going to give an answer in kilograms times meters per second if you're solving for impulse you're going to give an answer as newtons per second but they mean the same thing so either of them really would truly be correct uh, cushioning increases the, the time decreasing the force of impact. Uh, when you have your car, your beautiful car crushed in an accident, it actually could save your life. It could, it could stop you from being injured because it increases the amount of time and therefore it decreases the amount of force being felt because what's not changing, you have the same car stopping, the same mass of cars so that momentum is the same. So momentum is going to be, the change of momentum is going to be the same. The impulse is going to be the same because the impulse is equal to change in momentum. So what you're going to have to do, you're going to break down this. So the the mass and velocity and change in velocity, this is going to be the same. The, velocity, the change in velocity is from 15 to 0. The mass is the same. If I can go ahead, that's not distance, that should be time. If I can go ahead and, and increase the amount of time, that's going to therefore decrease the amount of force because this is going to be unchanged. And so if padding, any sort of cushioning that takes more time to, to stop something would decrease the amount of force for the same change in momentum. So both have the same change in momentum, and that's just what I explained before. That's kind of what I was talking about. So just, just note, if you have a great more time, you're going to have less force when you have the same change in momentum or the same impulse. How can padding uh, or or the crushing of a car on impact keep a person safe? Well, that's just what I said earlier. Cr crushing or padding increases the time of impulse, which decreases the force. So here's a problem set. Make sure that you've um, you've you've done the problem set before you check your answers. We're just going to go quickly through this. If once you're done with the problem set, just to check your answers so you can see the work if you didn't know why you got something wrong. So the first one, how many times difference is the momentum of a truck that has double the mass and double the velocity of the car is going to be the rule uh, the the ratio law rule of ones setting up a ratio double the mass double the velocity keep everything before the same because it was whatever it was what it is what it is it was what it was and we get four times whatever it was how much momentum does a two kilogram toy car going 3.25 meters per second have well this is just a straight up momentum equation it's not asking you for a change or anything you just multiply the mass times velocity so you get 6.5 kilograms times meters per second What's the mass of a bicycle that has 108 newton meters of momentum and a speed of 12 uh, meters per second? So there's our variables we're given. We have our equation. We're going to have to divide. We'll get mass alone. So we're going to get mass equals momentum of velocity, and we get an answer of 9 kilograms as our answer. How much? required to stop 
a 1200 kilogram car. So watch out, stop. It's going to have a VF of zero. Traveling at 88.5 meters per second in three seconds. So these are this is all the information I get from this from this problem. And so when I get my answer, I'm going to get negative 3,400 newtons or 3,400 newtons backwards to stop the object. How many times different is the force uh, is force of the time of impulses decreased? So this is not good if you're trying to protect yourself. The impulse is decreased by half. The time of impulse is decreased by half. So I rearranged it for force, the equivalent of force is impulse over time, put it over itself, and when it becomes one half of what it was, the actual one over 0.5 ends up being two, two times the original value. So the, so the force, you're going to feel twice as much of the force and therefore the hurt as a result of the force. What's the final velocity of a 0.152 kilogram t-ball that has a force of 10 newtons applied for 0.18 seconds starting from rest? So here's all our information they gave you. And when we rearrange this, so just taking a look at the math, we're asked for velocity, find velocity. We're going to have to first divide out the mass to get rid of mass, and then we can do. So we have to do the multiplication part, the vision to get rid of the multiplication before we do anything else. And then we can go ahead, and then we can go ahead and we can add the VI from both sides. And now we can go, we now we have final velocity equals that. So we can plug in our values, and when you get your answers, you should get 11.84 meters per second. What's final velocity of a 0.145 kilogram baseball? when a force of 25 newtons is applied backwards for 0.15 seconds starting from 10. So it started, it has a velocity this time. It's not zero this time. Same mass, same equation, except this time we're going to have that um, the, the initial of 10 in there. And so when you do the math, you end up getting negative 15.86 meters per second or 15.86 meters per second.